In this video, we're going to be looking at the tube molding process in detail. In the recent video we did, making a carbon fibre bike frame, some of the fundamentals of this process were lost in the overall complexity of the project. So hopefully by using this simple shape, we can demonstrate very clearly how the laps work and the two halves join, and how to make the tubular vacuum bag. This process is best suited to making fairly complex structures, whether that's a bike frame or an induction system or a component like this. It provides you with a moulded outer face and is made using split moulds. If you're just looking to make a straight or a tapered tube, the roll wrapping process might be more suitable. We do have a video dedicated to this subject entirely, so if you've not done so already, do go and check that out. The first step, as with any new pre prepared carbon fibre part, is to make a set of templates. So we're going to be using masking tape for this and that will give us a rough template that we can refine a little bit later on. As the masking tape doesn't unfold and flatten in the same way that prepreg will, we're going to oversize this slightly and then we're going to adjust that on the mould and then from there we can make a very precise pattern. The first ply is now in the mould. This is the ply that's going to be trimmed flush with the flange of the mould, so I'm going to do that now, but I'll also save the offcuts that I get, transfer them onto the backing ply, and that will then give me a very precise template for exactly how the carbon fibre drapes into the mould. So the future parts that I make will be much more precise and won't require adjustment. This is the precise template for the surface of the mould. So for the side that's going to have the laps that extend into the other one, we've got to make the three plies that we're going to be using slightly larger. So the first one will be five millimetres larger, the second one 10 millimetres larger, and the third one 15 millimetres larger to provide that staggered lap into the top. So we'll mark those up and cut those now. I've got the three plies marked out for the extension side. So we've got a 5mm, 10mm and 15mm extension. So that's one side of the mould. The other side of the mould, we need to reduce the size by approximately 3mm in this case, which will leave us with a bit of a lap. The first ply on this side of the mould finishes flush with the flange. So to make sure we get a good join between the two sides, this one is going to have the extension of five millimetres. So I'll lay this into the mould now and it'll be left with a protruding section here which will subsequently lap onto this ply here on this side, making the two halves join. With the first plies laid into both halves of the mould, we've got this side cut flush and this side with the small extension. Now that is what's known as a lap. And you can see how that works. When these two come together, that lap goes inside the other mould half. And then when the vacuum bag goes on, it will apply pressure to that and create a very strong join between the two halves. Though it might be quite difficult to see, hopefully you can just about make out the second ply just down from the surface here. So that's staggered away from the first and then the third ply, which is yet to go in, will stagger down a little bit lower again. All three plies are now laminated into both mould halves. So on this side, which starts flush with the flange of the mould, we've got the first, second and third ply staggering down like that. 
And then to pair up with that on the positive side, we have these extensions, again, the one, two, three layers here, which give us the join between the two halves. We're now moving on to the vacuum bagging. Here at Easy Composites, we've got a range of tubular bagging films suitable for internal vacuum bagging like we're doing here. It's important that you choose a size of vacuum bag which is quite a lot larger than the diameter of your tube. That ensures that you've got plenty of room for the bag to expand without the risk of it bridging. Our tubular bags are self-releasing, which means they can be put directly against the surface of the prepreg without necessarily having to use a peel ply or a release film. They've also got a fold system, which means that they can expand very easily sliding against themselves. This further reduces the chances of getting bridging. Prior to closing the mold, it's vitally important that you keep these laps folded in. Obviously, you don't want them folding out and becoming trapped between the two mold halves, but also it's quite easy for the top half of the mold to catch these, causing them to crease or wrinkle, and that would compromise the strength of the joint. So it's just a case of carefully leaning them in and checking that when they relax, they don't open out too far. On a small molding like this, it's relatively easy to close this without really risking this getting pinched. But on large molds, it can be quite useful to have tools available to just come in through the edge and keep those pressed inwards. Vacuum bagging internal geometries such as this tube does require a slightly unusual vacuum bag to be made. Hopefully, seeing it on a relatively simple shape like this should make it fairly easy to understand. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap this part in breather. This serves two purposes. The first is that it creates an air path, so when the vacuum's applied, the air can easily escape. And the other thing it does is covers up any of the sharp edges and corners, reducing the risk of the vacuum bag becoming punctured. Just before pulling vacuum on this bag, we can see relatively clearly now how it's going to work. So when we draw the air out of this outer bag, it will draw out between the green bag that passes through the center, and that will basically suck those two elements tightly together. So the inside bag will be being sucked onto the inside of the tube, and then the outer bag will be pulling down onto the outside of the mold. So that's giving us the consolidation that we need. With the cure complete and the part cooled to room temperature, the bag can be removed and the internal vacuum bag extracted. As this bagging material is self-releasing, the extraction is usually very easy. It's worth mentioning that internally vacuum bagged parts like this are most easily and commonly made with prepregs. And whilst it might be just about possible to use a wet layup or infusion process, the added difficulties that would be encountered would make it impractical for nearly all internally vacuum bag projects. After a quick deburr and trim, the final component is complete. 
If you need a perfect cosmetic finish with no visible flash lines, parts can be sanded down with 400 grit wet and dry and painted with a conventional clear coat or lacquer. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I mentioned right at the start, if you're just looking to make simple straight tubes, the roll wrapping process might be more suitable. We do have a video covering that topic specifically, so that's well worth checking out. If you want to see the molding process used in something much more complex, our video where we make a downhill mountain bike is well worth a watch. If you want to support our channel, and keep us making more content like this, we always appreciate a like and a subscribe, and do remember that all of the materials, so the X-Preg pre-pregs and the tubular vacuum bags, are available on our website.